you know, when I was a younger man and people were concerned with public morality and they would tell me how, you know, things weren't, aren't the same now as they were when I were a kid and we've lost our sense of public duty and morality. I always just thought like, you know, hey, uh, calm down. It's really not that big of a deal. Things are a little different. They were right. I was wrong. Uh, I'm gonna check to make sure um, folks can hear me. I'm gonna actually move to Ms. McNally. McNally, no conflict, yes. Thank you, Dr. Bell. Bell, no conflict, yes. Thank you, Dr. Lair. Lair, no conflicts, yes. Thank you, Ms. Bata. Bata, no conflicts, yes. Thank you, Dr. Brooks. Oliver Brooks, no conflicts, yes. Dr. Daly. Matt Daly, no conflicts, yes. Dr. Sanchez. Sanchez, no conflict, yes. Dr. Shaw. Shaw, no conflicts, yes. Dr. Long. Sarah Long, no conflict, yes. Dr. Cotton. Cotton, no conflicts, yes. Dr. Sineas. Sineas, no conflicts, yes. Dr. Paling. Paling, no conflicts, yes. And Lee, no conflicts, yes. Um, we, this vote now uh, passes uh, with 15 yeses. Go ahead, and zero noes. Yeah. Uh, yes, um, the vote passed, 15 zeros, or 15, 15 for, no against. Excellent, thank you. Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and it's been an interesting week. This week, the CDC has uh, recommended or announced that they are recommending the COVID vaccine for the uh, children's vaccination schedule. They took two votes. Basically what this ends up doing or meaning is that they are now saying they are recommending, and I'll talk about that in a second, that in order for a kid, you know, five, five, five years old in kindergarten, first grade or whatever, to go to public school, that they should get the COVID vaccine. I find this deeply evil and disturbing to say the least. If you've been paying attention at all for the past couple of years, by this point in time, it is abundantly clear that the COVID vaccine does nothing, never did anything, and only carries with it a risk to your health. And that's it. It is a, an experimental shot still that only can potentially hurt you and actually not help you at all. This isn't me making this up. Uh, they even came out and admitted recently in front of an EU council that they never actually tested to see if the vaccine could uh, you know, protect from transmission. And I will speak in English so there are no misunderstandings. Was the Pfizer COVID vaccine tested on stopping the transmission of the virus before it entered the market? If not, please say it clearly. If yes, are you willing to share the data with this committee? And I really want a straight answer, yes or no, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Um, regarding the question around, um, did we know about stopping humanization before um, it entered the market? No, uh, these, um, you know, we had to really move at the speed of science to really understand what is taking place in the market. On top of that, uh, we know it doesn't actually stop you from getting coronavirus because people with all the shots and all the boosters and all the precautions still get coronavirus anyway. So at this point, this vaccine does nothing. It doesn't stop you from getting it. It doesn't uh, prevent you from transmitting it. It's all been one big lie from the beginning and anyone who's been paying the slightest bit of attention knows that by now. So then you get 15 of the supposed best and brightest uh, doctors and medical professionals in a room who work at the CDC. They have all the fancy letters after their names. They go to all the, went to all the fancy schools. They teach at all the fancy schools. They're the, the, the best and brightest of American medical professionals. And these people, 15 of them, vote unanimously without a word of dissent or discussion or questioning or, hey, uh, maybe we should think about this to recommend that it is the best thing that kids 
take this shot. Think of how deeply evil that is because ignorance is really no longer a factor at this point. You cannot say, oh, well, he didn't know, they didn't know. No, they know. They know it does nothing to help and only to harm. And yet they think the best thing is to inject that into your kids. This isn't just some faceless evil. These are, these are 15 supposed Americans, supposed medical professionals, people who have jobs and lives who think that they rule over you and they know what's best for you and you should just take the experiment and deal with the consequences. Now, the motivation I think boils down to one of two things. The first one is just plain old fashioned greed. Uh, it's my general understanding that in order for a vaccine to get that full immunity, uh, they had immunity granted under the Emergency Authorization Act, you know, so no one can sue them for vaccine injuries. And now if they can get the vaccine added to this child schedule thing, uh, then they'll of course enjoy the full immunity forever so no one can actually sue them for damages or vaccine injuries, which at this point we are looking at orders of millions of vaccine injuries, like heart issues, death, uh, pregnant ladies losing babies, et cetera, et cetera. You can go look at the, I think it's pronounced VARS. You can go look at the VARS data anytime you want. It, it's all there. It's all publicly documented. This thing does nothing to help and only to harm. And I just can't get over how greedy that is that you would be willing to sacrifice other people's children in order to protect your billions of dollars of stolen taxpayer investment in your program. These 15 people, of course, will vote for it because they're gonna get the nice cushy jobs later in a couple years and or just under the table bribes, who knows? And they will land quite nicely because the system always takes care of its own. The depth of depravity and evil that it takes to knowingly sentence kids to permanent damage and death for money, it, I don't think I am able to articulate enough how deeply evil and sick that really is. You might say, oh, well, Dylan, you know, they're, they're just an advisory board. I mean, they don't, they don't like make laws, so you, know, you, can't, you can't get all upset at them. I mean, come on, they're just, they're just advising. Well, <laughs> that's a laugh. Do you remember when the CDC the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, canceled rent collection in the entire United States of America for something like six or 12 months. I remember because I made a video about it. But the CDC declared with their popple bull that they will fine you thousands of dollars and I think it was a prison sentence. I can't remember the exact punishments. However, they will put you in jail if you try to collect rent because it's a medical emergency or something. The CDC issued a law based on rent and it went all the way to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court said, you know, hey, uh, well, technically this is illegal. However, you know, it's gonna expire in like uh, two weeks. So we're just gonna let it go. And then of course it got extended after that because hey, why not? So don't sit there and tell me that the CDC is just an advisory board, that you know, they're not actually making any edicts or laws or popple bulls here. You know, they're, they're, they're just there to, to give their advice and their opinion. That is a lie. This is of course a precursor to things getting much, much worse. Wait till the police show up at your door to arrest you for child abuse and take your kids away because you won't inject them with what the state tells you to. I've just been thinking about it this week and the fact that these people are completely willing with, you know, they say no conflict in the vote, right? I think that's probably some technical proceeding. However, I think I can think of a few conflicts like the life of children. However, these people have no conflict in voting to sacrifice children on the altar of their bank accounts so that they can make millions, they can protect other people's billions, and everybody can ride off into the sunset in happiness. You know, the other reason it could be, I guess, is because maybe they're in that whole lockstep thing, you know, where, oh, I don't wanna question the science God because then I'll look foolish and I'll lose my job and I'll feel weird and people will make fun of me. So instead, I'm just gonna take the whole country and drive it right off a cliff and we can just find out what's at the bottom. In either case, it's either cowardice or deep, sick evil. And in any event, none of these people are fit to work in public health ever again, period. At this point, if it's not abundantly clear, the CDC should of course be completely defunded, dismantled, and scattered to the winds. All of these people belong in prison for the rest of their lives. 
It is beyond sickening to me that people would willingly experiment on kids and then confirm that experimentation even when they know it's going to be only be harmful just to protect their money. There's a lot of people that belong in prison from this whole deal and these people just moved to the top of my list. Have a good weekend. Do brave deeds and endure.